We're studying the Roman Empire. So I thought I'd show you a few photos of my several visits to Rome, Italy, which was the beginning city of the Roman Empire. I'm going to show you some photos of ancient ruins. Uh, I'm going to skip the Colosseum on this one. Though. I have so many, I'm going to show you those a little bit later. But also going to show you some photos, tell you a little bit about the Pantheon. And also some photos of uh, other parts of the city of Rome, like piazzas and their aqueduct system. So let's look at modern Italy today. Italy is a country. Here's the boundaries with the capital city of Rome. You can see there are two islands that are part of the city, the country of Italy. Official language is Italian. They are a republic a form of government uh, like the United States, people have rule, and population is about 60 million. Look at religion though, it's not surprising um, that because that's where it's the head of the Catholic Church. Catholics comprise 81 percent of all of Italy. And if you look at Eastern Orthodox and Protestants, these two groups are also Christians. They're not Catholics though, but they're Christians. But you add this 5% to Catholics, that means uh, in Italy, 86 out of uh, every 100 people are Christians in Italy. So not surprising. So first, let's look at uh, something just outside the Colosseum. This is called the Arch of Constantine. Remember, Constantine was the emperor who moved the capital city from Rome to Constantinople. It was Byzantium, and they named it after him. And so they built this monument to him in Rome, just outside the Colosseum. This was built around the year 315. It was about his battles in the year 312. Again, still standing today, 1,700 years later. The Colosseum is just to the left here. Now to the right, you can see here on this sidewalk, I'm going to walk up a street this street is called the Via Sacre, and this was um, at the top of this street is the Arch of Titus. They have several arches throughout Rome. This one was built around the year 81, and it's the victory of Emperor Ves uh, Vespasian and his brother Titus. And it was built, again, uh, built around the year 81. It's about the battles of the Emperor Vespasian around the year 70 to 71. Again, still standing today. <clears throat> this is walking through the old city of Rome. And again, it's just incredible to think that all of these bases here for buildings were built over 2,000 years ago, and they are still standing. Of course, uh, this was the original city. Over time, as the Roman Empire collapsed and you know weather would blow in, dirt, etc. This was all undercover for a while and then it was discovered by man again. So um, this is the original city of Rome. You can walk around, see all these buildings, including this one. This is the Basilica of um, Maxentius and Constantine. And this was built around the three year, the year 312. And this was their judicial building. But again, look how big it is. Beautiful sky outside, still standing today. This is the Temple of Antoninus and Faustima. This was built around the year 114. And this building was constructed as uh, by an emperor for his wife, but still standing today, later taken over by the Catholic Church, but still standing today. Walking around through the old city of Rome, you can see the streets over here, buildings still standing. And at the other end of the city of Rome, here's another arch. This is the arch of Septimius Severus. And this, again, is about the victories of the emperor. This was built around the year 203 for the battles that he faced in the year 194. Now, not too far away is the Pantheon. Uh, many people have seen this building before. Uh, one of the first monumental buildings that they built. It's the one with an arch. Uh, I mean, an, uh, um, uh, an oculus in the center. 
The original one, though, was built around the year 25 BC, so it's over 2,000 years old, but the original one was built of wood. It burned down. The one that's still standing today was built right on top of it from the original one that built down. This one was built about the year 125. Now you see all these bullet holes. These are remnants from World War II. Uh, Italy was part of Germany in World War II, and yes, the United States and England and France did attack Italy quite a bit during World War II to put a stop to the war, but our goal was to not destroy these buildings. So that's why there's some damage, but the building is still standing. And as is in typical Rome, Italy, Roman fountains throughout the city still working today. Now this a building, the Pantheon, was originally built for all of the many gods of the Roman Empire. This is before they became uh, with a belief in one god. When the Roman Empire switched from being polytheistic to monotheistic, Catholic Church then used this building as one of their first churches. And that's why now you see the Catholic items inside today. It's still a church. This is the building, uh, again, with the oculus or this dome and the circle in the center to let in light and but it also as the sun is moving around this gigantic room is a clock tells you what time it is also of course water would come in so the floor when they built this has uh, little sleeves in it to let the water run through so it doesn't add up again beautiful roman columns in the city you could tell how big this entrance is this metal door there at the Pantheon. Just incredible. Here's going into other parts of Rome. This is the uh, Piazza Navona. There are many piazzas or open squares throughout Rome. I went to Piazza Navona. Uh, uh, it's such a long uh, rectangular building because it was originally the stadium of Domitian. But then later they uh, built this Piazza Navona on top of it. So that's why it has the shape of a stadium, but now there are modern buildings on top. And in this, there are three fountains because it's a long rectangular setting. The one in the center is uh, very uh, famous around the world. It's Fontana, uh, Fontana de Quattro uh, Fiumi. And it means um, fountain of the Four Rivers. This was built by Bernini. Now, you're not going to hear this name, Bernini, as famous during Roman times. He was famous during the Renaissance, which we're going to be studying later. So this was not built until the 1600s, at the time of the Renaissance. But it's in Piazza Navona. Again, Romans were famous for bringing fresh water in to all of their fountains. And, of course, the rich people had water in their own houses, Things like toilets, and they took the bath every day. Romans were quite different from other people lived at the time. But the reason also I like Piazza Navona is because there's this restaurant here called Trescalini. And Trescalini is known for this great dessert, Coppe Gelato, their ice cream and uh, brownie. Just incredible. This is at Piazza Navona. This is the Trajan Column built by another Roman emperor. And as you're reading through this, this is about all of his many battles as the emperor. This Trajan's column was built around the year 107, still standing today. Now, maybe the water and the aqueducts were built by the Romans, but this Trevi fountain was built during the Renaissance in around 1732. But again, such a beautiful square with all of this beautiful running water coming through. Trevi Fountain in Rome, Italy. There's an old tradition that if you stand with your back to the fountain and throw a coin with your right hand over your left shoulder into the water, that means you're going to come back to visit Rome. And I don't know how true it is, but I've been to Rome a few times. So, Down the street is a place called Spanish Steps. Uh, Spanish Steps is a beautiful wide walkway. It's called the Spanish Steps, though, because this is the Spanish um, uh, government building. 
at the in the square at the top. So that's why it's called the Spanish Steps. And as you look, now this is looking at the top, down the Spanish Steps. Again, a beautiful fountain down at the bottom. Fontana de la Barcaccia, Fountain of the Boat. Again, maybe the water was brought in through Roman aqueducts, but this fountain was built in the 1600s, 1627 to 1629. But even then, if it was built, it's still working today. And this is good, fresh, clean water coming in from the river. So this is where a lot of people, especially in Rome when it's hot in the summer, brings in their water bottles and fills it up here. Of course, there's a McDonald's just right down there. And at the McDonald's, they sell Italian ice cream, not like we do here. And when I'm walking down the street, looks like here's a couple nuns who had just been in to get some ice cream at McDonald's. Walk down the street, and this is the Holy Angel Castle, Castel San Angelo. And it was originally built as a uh, mausoleum. But this building connects with the, um, the Vatican. So that building was protection for the Pope. There was an underground tunnel that would go all the way from the Vatican down to this Holy Angel Castle. This too, uh, this bridge is the oldest bridge still standing, built by Emperor Hadrian. And this bridge is called the Ponte Rotto, built in the second century BC, crossing the major river in Rome. And then this is the uh, Holy Angel Castle, which was built as a mausoleum, but then protection for the Pope when he was being attacked. Uh, this is going back again to Trevi Fountain at night with the lights on. So. I hope one day you get to visit so anywhere you want to go around the world. You're going to love world travel, but you're going to remember a lot of history when you begin to travel. So I'm going to have some other groups of pictures I will show you as we study throughout the year. I hope you enjoyed.